In today's video, I show you how to set up and use Radar. What is Radar? Radar is an ebook collection manager for Usenet and BitTorrent users. It can monitor multiple RSS feeds for new books from your favorite authors and will interface with clients and indexers to grab, sort, and rename them. Let's get Radar set up. If you don't already have a location store set up for your ebooks, you'll need to create a subfolder under your media share. Since my setup is based on Trash Guide's folder structure, I'll place my subfolders under the slash data folder. Let's browse there first. Adhering to the Trash Guide's folder structure, I'm going to go under data, then in there we'll have media, and inside of that you want to create a folder for ebooks and for audiobooks if you want to do audiobooks. If you go back a level, you're going to have to have the same folders created under torrents, and then if you go back again, and the same thing under Usenet, completed. We're done with the media shares for now, so let's go open the community applications. So let's go back to our Unraid server and click on apps. And in the search box, I'm going to search for Readar. All my other R containers are the bin hex containers, so I'm going to stick with that. So find the bin hex Readar in your list and click install. I'll be changing my network type here from bridge to my custom alien proxy network. And if you don't have a custom network set up yet, then you can go watch my video, Bring in the Trash with Trash Guides and Unraid. I cover setting up one in that video. And then for host port one, it wants to use port 8787. Let's see if that's available. So I'm going to scroll to the bottom and open up show Docker allocations. Scroll back up, double click on 8787, and then do control F for find. Shows two results. Those are both right there, so we have nothing down under Docker allocation, so we should be good. Moving on. On host path 2, we're going to change that to be our data location, so I'm going to drop off the slash app data slash data, and just change that to slash mnt slash user, and then data, then we'll click off there. Host path 3 is the location for our media file, so once again, we'll click on to there, go to data, then this time, media. Everything else looks good. We'll scroll to the bottom and hit apply. And enjoy some coffee while that's downloading. And then we'll click done. Now we're going to go over to our Docker tab. We'll find bin hex radar in the list and turn on the auto start. Then we'll click on its icon and drop down and select web UI. On to the setup. First thing radar requires is some authentication. So let's set up our authentication method. I just like to use the basic browser pop-up, nice and simple. Put in a username for yourself. I just do demo on this one. And then a password for it. Then click save. Make sure they're typed right. There we go. Now let's add our root media folder. So I'm going to click add root folder and click on the big plus icon. I'm going to name it ebooks. And for path, we're going to click on the little folder and select our location here. And we know it's under data, media, and then ebooks. Then we'll click OK. Monitor new books. I'm going to select none. And then metadata profile. We'll get to that in a moment. All right. So under quality profile, we have ebooks selected. We can select spoken, which is for audiobooks. However, while Radar has the option for audiobooks, there's not currently a good way to have both ebooks and audiobooks for the same author. It's one or the other. To get around this, I have two instances of Radar set up, one for ebooks and one for audiobooks, and then they talk to each other. I call the audiobook version SpeakR. Kind of fun. If there's any interest in setting up the audiobook version and having the two integrate together, let me know in the comments. And if there's enough interest, I'll record a video on how to do that. But for now, I'm just going to stick with audiobooks, so we'll stick on ebook. Then metadata profile. I'm going to select none on that. The reason I select none is that because on standard, it's by default going to get every book that your author has written ever. I don't want all the books that my authors have created. I usually get one or two from an author, and that's, that's usually it. Now, if you're a diehard fan of all your author's works, then you can set this to standard, and by default, it's going to get everything it can. I don't want that, so like I said, I set it to none. So that's everything there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save now. All right, now I'm going to jump up to library in the top left. We're going to do update all. And in the bottom left corner, you'll see that it's identifying books down here. So I'm just going to let it do its thing for now. So now let's jump down to settings while Radar scans your library. First thing is media management. We'll go into there first. First thing I'm going to adjust in here is book naming. So I'm going to click rename books. We'll leave replace illegal characters selected. And then you can choose what kind of colon replacement you want. I just leave it on the default smart replace. That should be everything there. So I'm going to go up to the top and click save changes. Next, we'll jump down to profiles. And under quality profiles, you've got profiles for ebooks and for spoken. So if you go into one of those, it'll show you the different file formats that are available. FLAC, M4B, MP3, unknown audio types. Those are obviously all for audiobooks. AZW3, EPUB, MOBI, and PDF, and then unknown text files. The defaults are usually good for me, so I just leave that alone. Same thing with the spoken. But if for some reason you don't want unknown audio, you can just deselect that. I'm going to leave it in defaults for now. 
cancel out of there. Metadata profiles, this is the one that I had you change from standard to none. Going into that, it shows you the options that are available. You can skip books with no ISBN numbers. You can skip part books and sets. You can skip secondary series books. You can adjust however suit your needs. But like I said, I like to add one book at a time, the books that I want and nothing else. The popularity, the higher the number that is, the more it's going to refine the search down. So it's going to be really popular books. The more obscure the book, the lower the count's going to be. Cancel out of there. Jumping down to indexers. You can add indexers here by hitting the big plus. Then you select your torrent or your news group indexer. I use Binhex Prowler for this, so I'm just going to leave that blank. If you don't have Prowler set up, then go watch my Prowler video to get that set up. I'll leave the link in the description. I'll jump over to that real quick and just show you what that has. So under Docker and Prowler, just a few indexers that I've added here. And you can see it's got different categories, movies, audiobooks, excuse me, movies, audio, PC, TV, triple X stuff, books, other TV in that one. This one has books, this has books, books, books. A couple different options there. Going back to Radar. To get some indexers set up for Radar from Prowler, let's go do that. So I'm gonna jump over to my Prowler instance, gonna go down to settings, and then down to apps. So I've got LiDAR, Radar, and Sonar in here. Then we'll click on the big plus, find Radar in the list, select that. Name of Radar is great. We'll leave that alone. Sync level, we're gonna leave on full sync. Tags we can ignore. The Prowler server is gonna be the server address for your Prowler server. My case on here, it is 10.0.0.11 then colon 9696, which is the default port. If you changed it, then set it accordingly. Read our server, the next one down, let's get rid of local host. Once again, put in the IP address for the server for that, which is 10.0.11 for mine with the port number 8787. The API key, and you see here, it says the API key is generated by Radar under settings and then general. So let's go get that. Jump over to Radar. We're under settings already. Let's go down to general, scroll down a little bit, and you'll see API key listed there. We'll click on the little copy button next to it. Go back to Prowler, paste that in under API key, and then hit test. Should come up with the green check mark. That means everything checked out good. Then hit save. Now you'll see it in the list of applications there. Let's go back to Radar. We're going to jump down to download clients. Once again, click the big plus. Then you'll choose your download client here. I'm going to set up... I think I got Qubit Torrent running right now. Let me check real quick. Yes. All right. So we'll use that. And as you can tell, I've got Deluge on here as well. So you can set up both. We'll do the Binhex Qubit Torrent VPN for now. Go back to Radar. Find the Qubit Torrent. Select that. We will name it accordingly. And for the host, we will put in the server IP address for that one. And that is once again 10.0.0.11 on mine. Port number default is 8080. And that's what I use. So I'll leave that alone. The username that I put in on that one was demo and then my super secret password. In the category, we will name it Radar. Leave that alone. Recent and older priorities, we'll leave those both on last. The initial state, we want that on start. Sequential order doesn't matter. First and last pieces don't matter. Yep, everything else looks good. We'll scroll down. Oh yeah, you definitely want remove completed. Remove imported downloads from download client history. You, you want to enable that. So hit test. It should come back with a green check mark. Once it does, hit save. And if you want to add in Deluge, you do the same thing. You click on the plus, you find Deluge in the list, name it accordingly, put in the IP address for it, 10.0.0.11. Port number would be fine. Password, put in your password, and you hit test. Once again, make sure download completed is selected. Mine's not on, that's why it failed. So I'm just going to leave it on the Qubit torrent for now, but that's how you add the other one. And that covers the basic process for setup. So now let's go back to our indexers and see if Prowler's set that up yet. It's got one in there so far. And the more indexers you have in Prowler, the more options you'll have here. And I found that it does take a little bit, but it will get more than just the one in there. Just gotta be patient. That covers the basic setup process. Now let's get into how to use Radar. But before we do that, why not hit the like button and subscribe if I've given you some value. So let's go up to library and it's going on us to log in. So I'm gonna put in my username here, which was demo and my super secret password. And there you go. And you can see now that it's imported all the authors from the library that I already had in there. So if you click on an author, let's say Arthur C. Clarke here, it'll show you the list of books that I've got from him. And here it gives you some more detail on the author, a little description of him, the location of the media files, how much space it's using, what format it's in, whether it's monitored or not, if he's continuing to write stuff, and then links over to Goodreads. Down below, it's got a list of all the books, the release dates, the pages, the rating of the book, 
what type of book it is, ebook, or excuse me, EPUB in this case, than the typical auto search and manual search. Clicking into one of these books, we'll do 3001. It'll show you, wow, that's interesting. Not the language I would have chosen. So obviously I got some cleanup to do there, but it uh, shows you the title of the book, cover, once again, normal stuff, the author name, pages, book rating. Instead of here, you've got the option to do renaming options. So let's go ahead and click on preview rename. And it says it's already done. It's already got the file named in a proper format. So let's cancel here. We will open up my folder for there and go look at it real quick. So we got data, media, ebooks, Arthur C. Clarke, 3001. And that's the, the naming structure there. Going back here, if we go back under authors, go into somebody else, same information, information about the book. On the left, if you go under books, it'll show you all the books. This one does not have any cover art assigned to it yet. This one looks kind of generic. So we can click on to those preview rename. There's one that needs it. So at this point, you just select the books you want, and then you hit organize. This is Sunstorm. It is not 2001, so I don't want that one. And then I'm not really sure why it's doing number one here. It says part number, but I don't believe it's a multi-part book. I know it's a multi-part series, but not, not a book. So I'm just going to hit cancel on that for now. I'll deal with that later. This is all demo data anyhow, so it doesn't really matter. Back under books, shows you all the books in the collection. Down here under Rendezvous with Rama, there's a little circular guy here. All the books have that option. That's for refresh book, so let's go ahead and select that. That should go out and refresh the metadata and the cover art. But apparently it's found everything it wants with it, so we'll just leave that alone for now. If you want to add new book to your library, you can just go add book. And then we'll type in an author here. Let's go with Stephen King. Let it load up. You can select the author. You can choose which books you want monitored, all books. And this is what I was telling you earlier, that it's going to do every single book from that author. That's why I select none. New books, anything that comes out new from them, going to go none. Then you hit add. I don't want to add them. So I'm just going to close that. But you can do the same thing for a book title. Sticking with Stephen King, we'll do stand. And there it is. Once again, click on the book. Tell it what you want it to monitor, what type of file, what profile type, and then you hit add. You can also have it start searching for the book. I don't want to add it, so I'll close out. Now let's jump down to bookshelf. Here I'll show you all the books by author that you have. In this case, Arthur C. Clarke. You can see all the books here. Edward Griffin, Gina Wickman, so on and so forth. From here, you can select all, you can select some of them, whatever you need to do. You can make adjustments down at the bottom, change monitoring the author from unmonitored to monitored, the normal stuff, existing books, new books, you can update everything at once. It's nice if you accidentally selected everything to be monitored. You can just go in there and select everything and tell it to not monitor it. Let's jump back up to authors. I want to show you something else real quick. Go to authors. We'll go to Arthur C. Clarke here because I've got multiple books by him. Down below, you've got the book series here. All the books listed, you get the series. Let's click on the series. And it shows you the different series of books that he's written. Under Time Odyssey, I've got one there. The Rama books, I've got all four of them. Space Odyssey, I've got two books. And you can see the numbers here, one and four. So I'm missing book two and three. It's kind of a neat little feature. Under Unmapped Files, if there are any books listed here, then they are unrecognized by Radar, and they are not listed as existing in Radar. But they're in one of the root folders that you have defined. You can get more information by clicking on the little eye icon over on the right hand side. It tells you the file name and the location for it. It's found the book title as 02 2010 Odyssey 2. So we can tell it's part of the Odyssey collection for Arthur C. Clarke. It tells you the author name, the series name, Space Odyssey. And that shows series number two. And it's English. And then next to that eye icon, you've got the little manual import icon, the little guy. So click on him or her. Could be her. So here it's got Arthur C. Clarke, uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey. It thinks it's 2010. I'm not going to worry about that one now, but the 2010 one here. Yes, that is 2010. Then Sunstorm is not 2010, so I'm going to deselect that. But you select the one you want, then you hit import. And it'll process it and take care of it for you. Then if you decide there's a book in here that you don't want, you can just delete it out by hitting the little trash can. And lastly, you can also go up to the top here and click on Add Missing. And that'll try to add all the missing books into Radar. Note, if you got a large library, this can take some time. I only have three, so let's give it a shot. And it said importing zero files, so looks like we'll have to do them all manually. These are PDFs anyhow, so I'm not real concerned about those. Let's look at a few other features. So we're going to go down to settings, and you've got lists down here. So let's go down either on the side import lists or over on the side over here for lists. Same thing. Let's hit the plus here, and I'll show you what's in here. You've got other programs like Radar. You've got good read lists, you know, your bookshelves, 
other lists you've got in there, own books and series that you have in Goodreads. And it's also support for Lazy Librarian. I don't have enough books really to, to bother with setting up a Goodreads account or to get any of that connected, but you can do it. Then under Connect, down below there, we've got Connections. We'll click into Plus, show you what's there. The main ones that I think people are going to be familiar with is Goodreads. You can add that connection in so it can actually talk to the program or to the site. Kavita, which I do have that installed myself. That's for reading the books. That's really a nice program. If you want a video on that, let me know. Another popular one that people I'm sure are familiar with is Plex. Not sure why you'd have ebooks and Plex, but I guess you can. And we'll get out of there. And then let's jump over to media management. Yes. And then under our root folder, ebooks, you scroll down. You'll see here it's got Calibre settings. Read Arcan interface with Calibre's content server. So you have the option to enable that here, and then you get more information on that. And I have that. I don't have them linked up. If you use Caliber and you want to see a video on it, let me know. And if there's enough interest, I'll put one together for you. And that pretty much sums it up. If you enjoyed this video, check out one of these videos next, and I'll see you in the next one.